Well, good morning, happy people. Guess where we are? We're at the ranch because we're going to be doing a wild hog catch, clean, and cook today. But first, we got to find them. Alright y'all, got the GoPro on, I got me some Hornady Precision Hunters and I got my rifle in the back, let's go. Hog hunt. She's chasing us all over the ranch. Come on, get over here. Boys and girls, we may have ourselves a good hunt going on right now. Oh, giant hog. All right, all right, all right. How do I get to him now? There is a monster. Okay, so look. Look over my shoulder. See the big head right in the middle with the pine tree on the left? Yep. Just to the left, there's a big flag pond. On the other side of the flag pond, the hogs there working to the left. Okay, now here's our problem, here's our dilemma. The cows are gonna give us away. So we're gonna hook along there, we're gonna go to that head, work all the way out, and use that, use the bushes as we gotta go. We got the boogie, y'all. Stay. All right, so here's our big problem. We've got like 50 head of cows in between us and the hogs. And if we spook all the cows, then the hogs are gonna boogie. We're just gonna try to make it around them.
Howl 7mm 08 Hornady ELDX. Don't mess around, y'all. You know, this is all grass-fed, awesome beef cattle. Well, these hogs come out here and just root the place up, destroy it. So they told me, they said, you need to start killing some hogs. It's just very, very important. Coming into summertime, we need all our pasture land. We're gonna take all these hogs back to camp, clean them up. Let's go see what else we got. The keys to, to success today were understanding the wind, being patient, because as soon as we pulled up in this field, like five or six big hogs ran out. The hogs that I was actually after ran out of the field. So I just stayed patient. I kept using my binoculars, looking, 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 and maybe 600 yards away out here in this flag pond, I saw just the tops of these two hogs' backs. Paid attention to the wind. I knew the wind was out of the east, so I worked around to the west. I used that big bunch of trees as cover, came around the back side of them, and then I was able to make three good, clean, ethical shots. And the only way you can do that is being familiar with your gun, spending time at the range, using quality ammunition, and being familiar with your weapon. And because we owe it to the game that we hunt to be accurate. I don't want to come out here and wound animals and let them run off injured. You want to make a queen, quick, ethical kill. All right, you guys, we got that hog cleaned up and just came to the house. Beautiful little back straps, tenderloins. So let me show you how we do this. Let's get our pan on high. We've got a little bit of butter. The butter just helps to give it a nice little creamy flavor, help brown it up. And we'll, we'll just fillet this meat right off the back of that silver skin there. Pretty, pretty simple stuff thus far. When you're, when you're working with wild game, anytime you have meat that's bloodshot or bruised, you want to get rid of, you know, you want to, you, know, you don't want to cook it because it'll give a, 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 a tough and gamey flavor. So that's fine. And anytime you have like that connective tissue, you want to get rid of that because that will make it tough as well. And I hope everyone that watched the video understands why I shot all three of those hogs. It's, it is mandatory that we thin out some of the hogs. Now, you all, then you'll say, well, why do you relocate some? And why do you, every single day, I have to make decisions based on what I'm doing that day, what my conscience feels like. Um, if I can relocate a hog, or relocate a, any kind of animal, that's what I would rather do. But with these hogs, they were out there in that pasture doing exactly what we wish they weren't, which is rooting up the place. So we had to, we had to thin them out. Alrighty, now we'll take some fresh cracked pepper and some Everglades heat. We're making pop tacos, might as well. Season it up nice, roll it all around. Try to get that season infused in the meat. Mm. This is gonna be so good, y'all. Oh yeah, baby. We're just gonna let that start cooking down. We wanna cook this for a good little while just to really break it down. We wanna be nice and tender and full of flavor. All right, now that our meat's starting to brown, we're gonna add some corn and garlic and onion. A Little more pepper. A Little more Everglades heat. And we're just gonna let that start doing its thing. Reduce the heat a little bit. Last little thing we're gonna do to really bring them to life, we're gonna squeeze 
some fresh lime juice in them, just like that. That lime juice just makes it right. Take a couple warm tortilla shells like that. Mm. Look at that, y'all. Just love and goodness. Gonna get some cheese. On top of there. A little green onion. That is loving goodness. Wonderful. Guess what? We just had something happen that I've never had happen. Well, I've had it happen, but not lately. The tacos were off the chart good. Like, ask her. Very, very good. Yeah. Emma's eaten a few. Oh, that's rice and beans. Yeah. Yeah. Meat too. We destroyed it. We ate all, all of it. But the. The in, I, for some reason, the file wouldn't play, so I couldn't include it in the video. I just want to let you know, they were delicious, amazing, awesome, and you ought to try it sometime. You can try it with any meat you want. Store-bought or wild game that you hunted. Best tacos ever. Yeah, super, super good. That's all we got to say. Hey, if you want, if you like this shirt, this hat, bunch of new stuff, check out DeerMeatForDinner.com. We go.